Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and we are here in the Physics Surgery original series. Um, I have brought forward to you a simplistic looking question but highly misunderstood concepts are going to be dealt with in this particular problem right from the basics to the uh, high level the situations right so even those high level situations i'm talking about are well within the je advanced syllabus so what we are going to deal with is i'll give you a comprehension followed up by five simple questions and you're supposed to answer the questions based on the sequence of the uh, situations that are being asked in the comprehension okay so uh, let's go ahead with the formal wording of the question so this is the passage, the questions are in the next page. So once I read the passage and I flash the questions in front of you, just pause the video a bit, try those questions and then come back for the solution of the problem. Okay, so here it is. When a particle is in motion along a curved path, its velocity at a point A is along the tangent to the path at point A along the dotted line shown in the first figure. We may split this velocity into two components, one along the position vector OA bar and call it radial velocity and another along the perpendicular to the OA bar and call it transverse velocity. Okay, right. Same can be done to acceleration at A and call the components as radial acceleration, which is along the position vector. And another component that you'll end up getting is the transverse acceleration, which is the acceleration perpendicular to the position vector OA bar. Okay, so. Now the question, a particle is executing uniform circular motion of angular velocity. This is a printing mistake. Consider this as omega in xy plane with the radius r and center at 2r comma 0. Okay, we will talk about the diagram in the next page. When it is at point A, which is the top of the circle, answer the following questions. So here's the diagram. So he's talking about a uniform circular motion, a simple uniform circular motion, angular velocity is omega and the center of the circle is 2r comma 0 and the radius is capital R. Okay, so it will keep on going like this. The origin is here and he's talking about answering these questions with regards to this instant where the particle is at the topmost point of the circle and moving towards the right. Okay, right. So these are the five questions. So you want to start, read them on your own. Just pause, go through them, try to attempt it for over maybe eight to 10 minutes and then come back for the solution. So I would request you to go through all the five questions. The real um, cream of the question lies in the fourth and fifth one. First three, I think most of you would be able to solve. Okay, so that's a head, heads up for you. Let's go ahead. Angular velocity of the particle about origin. Radial velocity of the particle with respect to origin that he's asking, okay? And net acceleration of the particle with respect to origin, everything he's asking about origin, okay? Magnitude of angular acceleration of the particle with respect to origin. So angular acceleration is asking about origin. And transverse acceleration of the particle with respect to the origin. So these are the five simple concepts that you are supposed to solve when the particle is at A, executing uniform circular motion, okay? So give a pause, have a try and come back. So I'm going ahead with the concepts and solution. So in the first slide, we'll solve the first three questions, which are actually basically simple, okay? So here's the picture that I have drawn for you from the diagram, as you could see on the right side of the screen. The particle is at A and moving towards right. And since it is uniform circular motion, the velocity vector would be perpendicular to the radius vector. And also the acceleration would be only centripetal in nature. There won't be any tangential acceleration, it's a simple thing. So what is meant by angular velocity of point at A with respect to O? If it is asked with respect to C, then it would be simply omega. But with respect to O, the position vector has this kind of a length, right? And you all should be knowing for a planar motion, this formula is only valid for planar motion, which it is in this case. It is equal to velocity at point A perpendicular to the position vector at point A divided by that perpendicular distance. Okay, so we need component of velocity. This R omega has two components, one along OA and one perpendicular to OA. We all should realize that the duty of r omega cos theta, where theta is this thing which we can find using sine theta is 1 by root 5. Can you see this triangle r and 2r and root 5r and cos theta is 2 by root 5. Not a big deal. So coming back to the important aspect here, the position vector that you have, this green one, as you could see, changes in two aspects. The next dt seconds when the particle moves here, the position vector lengthens, right? It expands. Not only that, it rotates. 
so we attribute this two behaviors to two components remember velocity vector is responsible for change in position vector and the change in position vector is happening in two ways one is changing its magnitude and one is changing its direction the direction change always happens because of the component which is perpendicular to the root 5r just imagine this root 5r is like a chewing gum okay i know it's gross example but i hope you can visualize that imagine this is a chewing gum okay it's fixed at this place and someone is applying some kind of forces this way and this way the effect in this direction elongates the chewing gum whereas the effect in this direction rotates the chewing gum i hope you understand that whereas in circular motion uniform circular motion you realize if the chewing gum is this radius vector then this r omega only rotates this one that's why dt seconds later this radius doesn't change in length that's the beauty of circular motion it doesn't have a radial velocity whereas for this position vector it does have a radial velocity and it is this one so radial velocity changes magnitude of position vector and the transverse velocity that's the word word transverse means perpendicular transverse velocity rotates the position vector and that rate of rotation which is d theta by dt is given by the uh, transverse velocity r omega sin theta divided by root 5r which is simple i think most of you would be knowing this this is a very simple je concept okay so the real crux lies in the fourth and fifth problem so stay tuned so v radial and i already told you should be the rate at which the magnitude of r changes which is nothing but this component which is r omega cos theta and substituting cos theta is 2 by root 5 you will end up getting 2 r omega by root 5 okay so the third question is much more simpler uh, standing anywhere on this particular plane or even out of the plane as long as you are at rest you are all inertial frames and from any inertial frame acceleration is fixed so if in uniform circular motion we all know acceleration is directed towards center and is equal to r omega square i don't think it will change whether you stand at c and measure it or you stand at o and measure it this is one problem which i think you all should be able to easily answer and the answer should be r omega square towards c so let's go back and mark the first three problems answers and then we'll move ahead okay so the first one is omega by 5 and the second one that we ended up getting was 2r omega by root 5 and the third one was a simplistic r omega square towards the center okay so let's go to the fourth one before we start off with the fourth one we'll stall the fifth one fifth one was much easier it was about transverse acceleration we already ascertained that the uh, actual acceleration is always directed towards center at the topmost point this acceleration i can further divide into two components one this way and one this way and as is the case with the um, velocity idea the component which is parallel to the position vector is called radial acceleration and the component which is perpendicular to the position vector is called the transverse acceleration so this component of r omega square which you can easily measure this is theta i think this is theta therefore this component should be r omega square cos theta that should be equal to 2 r omega square by root 5 you should visualize and understand that transverse acceleration and tangential acceleration are completely different from each other the transverse acceleration is always measured with respect to perpendicular to position vector whereas tangential acceleration is always measured parallel to velocity the word tangential is related to velocity the word transverse is related to the position vector these two numbers actually become the same when you take the origin as the center for origin as center and uniform circular motion the transverse acceleration and tangential acceleration become same but once the origin moves out away from the center this is not equal to at you are not supposed to consider that as tangential acceleration it's related to velocity once the fifth problem is over let's go to the fourth one which is the angular acceleration of this particular point with respect to origin that's what was the question i'll give you a proposal that most of the uh, people uh, try to do they te get tempted to use this formula of at as i already told you a transverse or tangential they generally get confused and use r alpha okay right so they consider this as r alpha and therefore at they will take it as r omega square cos theta okay they'll substitute that r omega cos cos theta and this small r they already know as root 5r and they'll calculate alpha when you do this wrong calculation you get 2 omega square by 5 okay right the reason why this formula is wrong and remember we learn this from a uniform a circular motion is because in that circular motion it is correct about c you can use this point 
center because the r will be not changing in that case whereas here in the dt seconds next the value of small r is changing okay so uh, to get to this uh, actual uh, formula there are two ways of solving one is the basic method which i'll take in the next page the correct basic method there is another alternative way by using polar coordinate system okay polar coordinate system i'll take up it in a sub separate video uh, we'll try to use basics of trigonometry to get to the answer for the angular acceleration so this to be very very clear to all of you i'm striking it off this is a wrong way of calculating things answer is not 2 omega square by 5 so let's move on to the actual way of solving so slightly lot of things are there on the screen so don't get lost just stay along with my queue okay so what i will do is uh, i have to calculate the d square theta by dt square right we have to find that that is the basic definition of alpha even before all the dynamics is established we establish kinematics of angular acceleration and we say it is defined as the rate at which the double rate at which the angle is changing now in order to find any differentiation or double differentiation we always don't substitute the value at that instant i know the position was supposed to be here but what i would do and i think you will accept is i'll take any arbitrary position first get the function value of this alpha and then i'll substitute the special case that the point is here that means the value of phi in that special case i'll substitute as 90 degrees any differentiation you i think solve that way you actually get the general function differentiate and then substitute the required values you don't substitute first and then differentiate there's no point okay right so i've drawn an arbitrary position defined by uh, phi which is with respect to center and theta with respect to origin so theta and phi as this particle keeps moving are variable can you feel that okay this capital 2r is fixed this capital r is a rotating vector but its magnitude is fixed the small r both rotates and also changes in magnitude nice combination of three things here okay right constant constant in magnitude constant not in magnitude not in direction okay but we all know if this is radius the uh, velocity at this place should be perpendicular to this blue line which also it should tell you that this blue velocity vector and this red color r are not perpendicular to each other there is an angle between them the angle definitely would be easily measured as if this is theta minus phi minus theta i think this is also phi minus theta can you see that this is the perpendicular line to this red dotted line keep that in mind it will be useful so at any arbitrary position we all know the value of rate of change of phi which is nothing but angular velocity is omega i wrote minus because this is rotating in clockwise and phi is changing in a decreasing manner so that's why i wrote this whereas the d theta by dt at this particular instant would be equal to the component of this velocity in this direction right remember the first problem that we did always you take a velocity which is perpendicular to r and divide it with r so what is the component of this r omega in this direction it would be r omega cos of phi minus theta divided by small r we got, got d theta by dt and d phi by dt for further analysis okay now um I, and i want to differentiate this you, you can carefully see we are after double differentiation of d theta by dt right so i need to eliminate this capital r and small r in terms of angles okay so that finally all my things come in angles so for capital r and small r ratio in this triangle i'll use sine rule can you see a sine rule here small r divided by opposite of this angle which is sin phi sin 180 minus phi sin phi capital r divided by sin theta simplistic stuff therefore capital r by small r this ratio can be written as sine angle ratio of these two i just substituted that ratio i got this expression so minus d theta by dt is this big looking expression in which omega is fixed this is variable this is variable and this is variable okay right before i do anything lot of products are there i would like to have some because i'm going to differentiate this so that's a logical thing to do so i'll do omega by 2 sin phi out this would be 2 sin a cos b 2 sin a cos b i think you are all good mathematics students to be able to write some of two sin functions okay so i have got that with a two outside here then now i am performing differentiation on both sides okay so minus d square theta by dt square should be d by dt of this number okay this function so before i differentiate that i take this omega by 2 sin phi inside and i realize this is omega by 2 plus uh, into 1 so this constant is not going to affect my differentiation so it all boils down to just differentiating this ratio okay so that's the smart thing we have done there okay so let's move up now now 
in this particular differentiation i'll use the quotient rule division rule i know it's becoming tedious but there is no other way other than solving this one in this manner okay so don't use a is equal to r alpha that's a wrong formula so once you do this uh, uh, a p by q rule this is q square of this and then this multiplied by differentiation can you see that right i'm doing the differentiations multiplications all that and when you are differentiating this term you'll have the inside differentials also done can you see d theta by dt minus this thing this entire stuff will come okay now once the expression is in general you are supposed to find it at a particular instant which is this one i have drawn picture back okay so let me enlarge that for you now so can you now see that more clearly okay so now the angle phi can you see at that given instant this would have become perpendicular so phi is 90 degrees here and theta we all know is related by cos theta and sin theta values which we know so with all those substitutions can you see all these substitutions come into picture here phi is 90 will immediately eat away this term can you see cos phi this is gone completely okay and i can now only concentrate on this this and this okay so phi 90 cos theta sin theta d phi by dt is minus omega d theta by dt is minus omega by phi first question answer and then you will substitute all this we get this type of function omega by 2 as it is this would become cos of theta minus 90 degrees right so this is sin 2 theta and then you have this and this from here so with proper signs matched properly all these minuses are also important otherwise you will get a wrong answer okay so with this function sin there is a 2 here and there is a sin 2 theta so 2 gets cancelled this is a product of cos theta sin theta which is nice function here all those things taken into account you get this he asked for magnitude so minus won't be a, of any interest to us okay so the required answer is 6 omega square by 25 and not from the wrong method 2 omega square by 5 okay so let's go back and mark the required answers so here the answer is 6 omega square by 25 and this one would be 2 r omega square by root 5 which we solved okay so i do i i'll do another uh, problem in which the same thing can be obtained using polar coordinate systems which are essential for your olympiads but we don't teach it for je advanced so this is the basic method how you should be doing it in je advanced okay so th this relies on your understanding of the basic definition you should not lose the sight of the fact that alpha is defined as d square theta by dt square so that's the whole idea that we have been using in this entire solution okay so i hope you like this original problem and try to see the other important series uh, links of all those pathfinder solutions olympiad workout iits uh, resolve series i have been off late uh, devoting my time towards a je mains examination for uh, the outgoing seniors so i'll come back with all these things within due time so please do watch the older videos there is a lot of stuff more than 100 videos are there so that should keep you occupied during this period okay so in case you like them please do share them with as many students as possible so that the family of this channel keeps growing and request them to subscribe in case they have not yet subscribed and in case as you are watching you haven't subscribed trust me this is one channel i think you will not regret subscribing to okay so i hope you loved my company and hope to see you soon in the next video thank you